So have you ever heard of the tractor manufacturer called Shibira? Yeah, probably not. Me neither. Not until about eight years ago when I found this on Craigslist for a good price and did some research before going out to purchase it. Found another manufacturer has actually been having all their tractors built for them from Shibira. So if you've owned some tractors in the past, there's a great chance you've actually owned one of these. We'll get to the back to that in a bit and uh, solve the mystery on that. First off, I want to talk about what this video is about. So I've had this crusty old tractor for about eight years now, and the back tires have been kind of really split up in a bad shape. Finally, I've been dealing with trying to fill them up every so often when I want to use a tractor, getting tired of that. So I ordered some tires and tubes, and one thing led to another in this video, and I got those mounted. And we go on to giving the whole tractor an old facelift just to kind of clean it up a little bit. So uh, stick around, enjoy the video. Oh, and we'll get back to uh, the mystery on the other manufacturer for these things. So these tractors have all been around us for the past 45 years. You're probably wondering how do you miss the Shabir brand like that? Well, here's the first hint. They're not gray and red like this tractor. They're actually blue and white. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, who makes the blue and white tractors? Think about it. It's a four letter car manufacturer. You have any ideas? Yes, it's Ford. So back in the early 70s, Ford contacted the Japanese manufacturer Shibira and asked them if they could make their two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive subcompact tractors for them with their specifications. So there you have it, all those subcompact blue and white Fords in the 70s and 80s hauling dirt and plowing fields were actually all Shabiras at heart, just relabeled as Fords. And the, probably the reason we never saw many uh, Shabira tractors in the United States other than a few gray market imports like this is I'm sure Ford had a contract with Shabira so they would not compete in the U.S. market with them. But these tractors were sold worldwide, especially heavy in India and Asia. But they're very well built little tractors. Now, one of the things that always really impressed me about this tractor is how robust it is. It's only 18 horsepower four wheel drive tractor. I think it's late 70s, maybe 1980 at the newest. Cast iron, not aluminum like the modern Kubotas have. And look at this axle housing. I mean, I can't even fit both my hands around it. So it's, uh, it's almost like a six inch cast tube all the way out. Some tractors will drop off from right here. I have a carrier bearing and have a small little axle that runs all the way out. This tractor overall, the whole thing is built like this. It's just a pretty impressive machine. So after eight years of having this tractor, I even got like by four or $500 dropped off the price when I originally bought it because the tires are so shot. One of my friends, uh, Walter's like, you know, I've seen tractor tires just as bad as this go for years and years. He grew up on a farm. It's like farmers will run almost anything on those old tractors on their old farms. And uh, it's worked really well. But last year, finally, the tube's been poking out to here and these deep lugs really keeps the tube off the ground, but finally had a stick poke it. This white stuff is a little uh, tire sealant. It never really worked. It just kind of slowed down the leak. And I just got tired of, you know, using the tractor every week or two and filling up the back tire. So decided it's time to finally buy some new rubber for the back tires here. Well, it doesn't have any gnarly uh, calcium in it or anything. It's just a heavy tractor tire and uh, it's going to be very hard to probably break the bead on here. I don't have much faith. I mean, I've changed motorcycle tires, quad tires, but these look pretty gnarly. If I can pop the bead, I might be able to get these tires off. This, this is old bead breaker I built. I have a video I'll put down in the description. But uh, I built it for quad tires and things like that. Never intended a tractor tire, but I actually just popped the bead on that thing. So that worked out better than I thought. Hey, things are starting to look up. Almost free. Honestly, this wasn't much harder than doing a motorcycle tire. 
or a stubborn quad tire. I'm sure the next tire going on is gonna be a bit more difficult though. There we go. Looks like I got some 1970s playground equipment left over here. <laughs> some of you younger people don't probably realize that uh, people would bury these things in sand and dirt and, uh, and kids would crawl through them and climb over them. <laughs> Maybe I'll dig these in part way in the ground for my kids to go play. Re-embrace the 70s. Carcass looks good until you get to this point. This is where you can see light through it. And that spot. One of them had a big rubber patch. This must be a farm tech patch. Looks pretty legit. Goes in the little split there. But one of them didn't stay in place. Or one of them was non-existent. So pop the two. But it'd be good to get fresh tires on this thing anyways. It's, it deserves it. It's been a super solid tractor. see it or not but DID rims Japanese One side down, got to drop the tube in there. Hopefully you don't pinch it. Try to roll the next side on. That went easier than a motorcycle tire, but I could get too cocky on it. <laughs> Still got a long ways to go, and this is an eight ply tire. My finger, it's going pretty smooth. Even pinch my finger just putting the tube in. Actually, the rim and the tire got kind of caught between it snagged it on the cuticle but almost almost there Woo. my dad's standing off camera here and uh he's observing this whole thing i think he realizes also i think this was a little simpler than doing a motorcycle tire don't you think yeah. just bigger <laughs> All right, moment of truth, put the air in it. I'm pretty confident I didn't snag that tube. Kind of surprised the lug nuts on a 40 year old tractor still have uh, quite a bit of shine to them. They look pretty good. I've never had to take off the back tires in the eight years I've owned it, but it came right off. All right, time to mount this tire and move on to the other side. It's pretty amazing what some new tires and some rattle can paint makes on this 40 year old tractor. Like, pretty amazing. These tires should outlast uh, how long I own this tractor for. I've had it for eight years. I'm kind of thinking about upgrading pretty soon. We'll talk a little bit more towards the end of the video about that. Well, after getting those fresh tires on the rear and uh, clean paint on the rims, it was kind of inspiring. So I thought, oh, might as well wash this thing up with the pressure washer here and uh, consider painting some parts on it and uh, see what we get. As I was finishing up the mini Pensgauer bed with the black Rust-Oleum paint, I had a few ounces left, so I sprayed it on that front side loader arm and it really made it look nice. So I thought, man, Let's paint this whole front loader and uh, freshen it up a bit.
funny thing about this project was I just started on uh, changing out the tires a while back because of course the one kept going flat needed some new rubber on here and then painted the rims and then uh, one thing led to another I had some extra black paint from painting the mini Pinsgauer bed so I sprayed a little bit on one of these uh, loader arms looked a hell of a lot better so got this thing painted up and I think today we got rain in the forecast for tomorrow so I'm gonna pull the hood and fenders and uh, give those a little bit of love. Give them some red Rust-Oleum paint. So let's get cracking. So here I did some uh, Rust-Oleum Red on this section just to see how the paint looked and I thought I'd repaint it someday and that was like seven years ago. So definitely in need of some paint but the Rust-Oleum I just lightly sanded this and painted over the old paint and uh, it actually held up really well so as long as I get a paint job kind of like that I'm completely satisfied with it. Well, it's the first time I've used this product. We'll see how it holds up. I've used the rust mort stuff, but it's kind of a sloppy mess brushing it on. This stuff, you can just supposedly spray it on any rusted surfaces and it dries kind of like paint. Got the rust, rusty spots knocked down and dusted with this. So, get some fresh paint a little bit later when these things dry this evening. I mean, they're dry to the touch, but it says 24 hours, so. Should be pretty good. Mostly just had a lot of spotting where the rust was on top of the fenders and like I said I'm not making this a show tractor but I just took one little sanding if I really want to get into it, I would have wet sanded it primered it and even did a little bit of a tiny filler on here but 
I don't want to spend a week doing the body work, so this is good enough. All right, time to spray a uh, second coat of paint on here. Looks pretty good. That tape did pretty well for sealing that off. I thought I'd have a little more bleed through. Not bad for a 40 year old sticker there. Really happy the way this turned out. Started off with uh, just fixing the back tire and the paint and the rims and one thing led to another. And as you see, it looks a lot better. I've always kind of wanted to clean this thing up and paint it. Did the engine guards a long time ago, did one of the rims and touched a little red on the fenders a long time ago and thought I'd get around to it and just never made the time. The tractor just works. You go start, use it, use it for logging, hauling logs around here to my mill. A lot of dirt work and I uh, never really take the time to uh, just clean it up a little bit and paint it so it's pretty happy about it only thing I didn't get painted yet was the dashboard here it's still kind of like that pink faded red with some rust reason I I didn't get it finished well life happens things come up so got busy with other stuff and that's gonna hopefully not be on the back burner for another eight years <laughs> hopefully I can get that dash painted but you know, this would protect the metal for a long time to come, and uh, this tractor is pretty rad. I've been happy with it. It's been super reliable in the eight years, other than just doing the tires. Only thing that uh, burned out on it was the voltage regulator, and I got rid of the old original one, and for 25 bucks on um, eBay, I was able to get a solid state uh, upgraded part that was plug and play for it. So pretty simple to find, even if it's a gray market, I was able to find some parts for it, but that's been about it. This thing's been just super reliable tractor. I said earlier in the video, I was kind of kicking around the idea about getting a newer tractor. I was looking at some LS's, a few people were mentioning maybe looking the Coyote brand. 
kind of thinking about getting like 24, 25 horse. I want to stay away from emissions because I really don't think emissions control should be on small tractors. And after looking over the LSs, I just was like saw a computer on board. And again, I don't think emissions or computers should be on simple tractors like this. So I was thinking about doing the credit game. I've never played that game for any vehicle. And I was like, well, make payments, get a tractor. But a tractor is slightly bigger than this at 24 horse with the backhoe was going to be 32 to 34,000. And honestly, I just can't justify that. Like I got my mini excavator for 10 grand. I got this for 3,800 and yeah, it could have that new tractor for a long time, but how, who knows how long you can truly have one of those. The newer machines just don't seem like they're built quite the same as these old ones. This is built in Japan, really quality. It's an actual agricultural tractor, not a um, light duty five acre tractor for uh, a retiree to drive around in and mow his grass. So I think this thing is just pretty well built. Yeah, it's getting older. It might be harder to find parts for, but I don't use it and abuse it really hard. I mean, I use it for regular tractor duties, but had zero problems in the last eight years. So I replace this at some point. I don't think I'm going new. I've been looking into some really nice, this is like a late 70s model. I've been looking into some Yanmars from like the early to mid 80s, like maybe five to eight years newer, and they got more of a shuttle ship transmission. A few things like that. This is an old manual transmission. I'd like hydrostatic, but I don't think it's going to hold up for the 40 years without some problems. A friend of mine's mom had a Kubota she got in the 90s, and I think within 10 years of her getting it, the hydrostatic transmission screwed up on it and been in and out of the shop. And I think the last 15 years it's been sitting because it's beyond her capability to fix and her uh, budget. So I think I'll go for one of those shuttle shifts, and I'm thinking about selling this one on, on the road and picking up one of those Japanese-made Yanmars. They're just... It's hard to really beat the quality of a tractor that's actually built in Japan and where was built in an era when it was truly manufactured for agricultural use, not light duty retiree tractor guy like I see a lot of the Kubotas. Now, I'm sorry if you got a small Kubota and you get offended by that, but aluminum rear diffs on tractors is just not proper. Maybe for a riding lawn tractor, but not for a heavy duty agricultural tractor, even if it's a subcompact. So that's where I'm leaning on that one. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. And a future note down below when I actually post a video, I'll put a link to it. I modified a trailer, a three point trailer ball hitch and made a small log arch for it. So uh, that video will be up pretty soon. All right. Till next time. Take care. Bye.